Hello, I'm going to discuss an issue about the complex plane that bothered me like as soon as I learned about it and how I finally made peace with it. Okay, so we're going to have a line that starts at the origin and it goes out and then we're going to do a reflection around one of these axes over like here. This is our complex plane. And of course, you'll notice that I didn't actually say which one was the real axis and which was the imaginary one. And that's what bothered me because they are so fundamentally similar, they're both spatial, that un until I tell you which one is which, visually, there's nothing that distinguishes real numbers from imaginary numbers. Whereas the algebra is absolutely different. And that means that the visualization doesn't feel faithful to the algebra. And I've lived with that for quite a number of years until I made the following type of map. I said, what if real also means time? What if imaginary also means space? So this is not only complex plane, but it is space time. All right, well, that would be strange. Well, you, let's start with the point right there. That point, well, we know what it's, it is. That's the origin. That's zero, zero. But now it actually has a name. It is in the location here, because it's neither right nor left. And in terms of time, well, it's not the future. It's not the past. It is now. It is here now. All right. Now, if we follow the convention that the horizontal line is real, well, how am I going to look at this? I'm going to use my magic time stick. All right. And I'm going to essentially do a line animation, low tech. Oh, the blue is coming in. It's coming in. It hits the origin. It gets to here, and now this red starts going the other way. So a reflection around the time axis means that you have to remember how the blue line came in and say, oh, that's just like the red line is going out. That's a reflection in time. OK, but what if the convention was that the real was the up and down, uh, the vertical axis. What happens here? Well, oh, I get a blue and a red, and they're coming together. They're same distance apart. They come to the origin, and then they disappear. So now, reflections in uh, on, on the spatial axis fundamentally look different. I don't have to remember anything. I see two dots, and I see they are both equally far apart from me. So I know that is a spatial reflection. OK, so let's draw a circle. Very famous structure. Oh, this has lots of symmetry. <laughs> uh, it's going to look the same in a time reflection as a space reflection. In fact, it's called the U1 symmetry, but we'll and it has to do physically with, uh, with electromagnetism, amazingly enough. Now, when we treated this as a spatial thing, it was natural to treat, think about angles. But now that this is the real, and therefore time, and this is the imaginary, 
and therefore space, this ratio of space space to time is a velocity. Okay, so that's kind of neat. Because we can do our typical uh, polar sort of expression and get this sort of thing. Now, if the velocity is equal to zero, then it's all about all about time. Meaning the observer here at the origin simply this is separated from them not in space at all but it will either be so many t ticks of a clock in their past or their future when they get to that point. Whereas if we're uh, beta equals pi over 2, then we're talking about this sort of thing, then um, it's all about the spatial difference, all about space, the distance between the, observ the observer here at here now and that point. All right, so I hope that helps you see, visually see, how reflections in time are different from reflections in space, and therefore ref real numbers are definitely different from imaginary numbers. Thank you very much.